You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. We are here today with the ever popular Haya Costello from Drone DJ. Haya, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Good morning, Paul. Very well. Uh, thanks for the introduction again. How are you? <laughs> doing extremely well, doing extremely well. Although it is Monday, I'm really excited because we've got a lot of things going on here at Drone U. Really excited about some upcoming FAA stuff. We are also writing our comments to the NPRM today. How are you? Very good, very good. Do you want to start off with the uh, Anafi? Oh, I can't say how excited I am for this week in Drone News. When it comes to the new drone that's hitting the market. Haya, what do you have for us? Yeah, early this morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time, we were able to uh, announce that uh, the French drone maker Parrot is going to introduce the Anafi Thermal. And this drone is going to compete head on with the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Jewel, although this one is going to be quite a bit less expensive. Uh, it's a Fleur thermal sensor that's included in this drone. And if you remember from the original Anafi, you have this gimbal that points not only 90 degrees down, but also 90 degrees upwards. You can actually fly underneath structures and look up with this drone. Uh, they have a gimbal and camera that not only includes a 21 megapixel Sony sensor, but as well a uh, Fleur systems uh, thermal sensor. So you get the best of both worlds. This drone is going to be available starting uh, in May from authorized uh, resellers and as well from Parrot.com and I'm actually quite excited about this because this is a very compact lightweight drone priced below $2,000 so if you're a commercial or professional drone pilot or you're part of a fire department or a search and rescue organization these drones that are very capable are becoming more and more affordable now which is uh, awesome news. I, this is beyond awesome news and I think it's I think there's a major point that people need to understand while DJI has the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, which essentially has the same FLIR sensor and utilizes yeah. the MSX technology, the EO, or digital sensor, has a very small resolution. I believe it's only 12 megapixels. So the fact that the Anafi has a 21 megapixel Sony sensor and the same FLIR sensor that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual has, but also the Anafi has three times optical zoom on that 21 inch sensor, or excuse me, on the 21 megapixel sensor. That'd be a huge sensor, 21 inches. Um, yeah. <laughs> but why is this so important? Because Anafi uh, has now said, okay, we see DJI with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and we see the Mavic 2 Enterprise. Let's add those together. Let's bring zoom over here and a large sensor over here, throw that together, add the, the FLIR sensor, and have the ability to tilt up and down, you really are bringing together all the great things of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and the Mavic 2 Enterprise together in one drone that's also $700 cheaper than one particular Mavic over the other. And frankly, I think that's really exciting for people in public safety, for people who are in just basic inspections. Um, you know, maybe this could help out even with infrastructure inspections that are going on literally where you are today in Florida. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, I think what, what Parrot did was very smart. They make it a, um, a, turn, a turnkey package, basically. When you buy the drone, you get a shoulder back, three batteries. So now you can fly, I think it's for 78 minutes. So you have enough battery life. Uh, to fly for quite some time. I had the chance to actually uh, not fly the drone, but I've seen it, I've had it in my hands, and it's even smaller than the original uh, Anafi from Parrot. And they've also strengthened the arm. So if you remember from the original Parrot uh, Anafi, if you kind of twisted the arms, it, it felt a little fragile. Uh, actually, the first one I flew, I crashed and actually broke one of those arms. The newer one, if you can believe, is even smaller than the original, and they've strengthened those arms. So they made some uh, some notable improvements. Uh, they made the drone actually 10 grams lighter as well, which increases the battery life for the, the flight time by a minute or so. Um, small steps, but if you add it all up, of course, it, uh, it becomes quite a benefit. So yeah, we're very excited to see this new drone. And like I said, uh, $1,900 gets you the shoulder back, the drone, you get access to the software, three batteries, and it will launch in May of this year. So I'm super curious. Parrot is known to offer Pix4D software whenever you purchase uh, particular drones. Is that a part of this deal as well? 
I think it's Pix 4D model that they uh, that they include. Ah, so the super so, low end uh, version. Yeah, so you probably have to upgrade to a paid version if you want to get all the bells and whistles. But still, the bells and whistles are the things that are going to be necessary for delivery of most of the models. But anyway, it looks like. There is other very big news today because this is the ending of a period of time where you as a drone pilot have an opportunity to make a difference. Whether you make that difference is up to you, but we want to see, well, Haya, why don't you go ahead and tell us why is today so important other than the fact that it's tax day? Yeah, it's tax day for sure. <laughs> um, before the FAA makes any new rules and regulations for drone pilots uh, final, there is a comment period in which any drone pilot or operator can actually submit comments. And uh, today, at the end of today, there's the deadline for two new rules. Uh, the first one has to do with flying drones at night and over people. And the second one has to do with unmanned traffic management systems. Especially the first one, flying at night and over people, when uh, DJI sent out a statement last week, only 84 comments had been submitted. And DJI reached out to a number of media outlets, including Drone DJ and I think Drone U as well, uh, to help push this, uh, this agenda and urge people to submit their comments. And it has been actually quite successful. I think there's now 647 comments that have been submitted to the FAA. And the FAA actually reads through these comments and takes it into consideration when they make their final rules. So if you haven't done so already, I would urge you uh, still uh, before the end of today to uh, submit your comments as, of course, it's uh, valuable information and very helpful. Definitely could not agree more. Go ahead and submit those comments right away. But in other news, it seems like uh, drone regulations are becoming more and more important as one particular pilot decides to blatantly violate a TFR this weekend. What happened, Haya? Yeah, this was uh, during a baseball game at Fenway Park where the Boston Red Sox were playing Blue Jays. This happened last Thursday where all of a sudden a drone, and it seems to be a, a DJI Phantom, was hovering over the stadium. And I think it first started at around 9.30 at night and then it came back apparently and the last time it was seen around uh, 10.20. So somebody deliberately, willfully flew the drone at night, which is a no-no, of course, over a fully packed baseball stadium. So you can imagine that both the Boston police and the FEA, uh, and I believe even the FBI were all over this. And what I've read over the weekend is that a juvenile, a 14-year-old boy, apparently has been caught as or identified as the drone pilot. And I think he's in a bit of uh, hot water now as he broke a number of rules. Uh, he is in hot water, but I think a lot of people are watching, Haya. They want to see what actually happens because this is a great example of someone willfully violating some of the most strict rules yeah. of the Federal Aviation Administration. I'm talking about willfully flying in a TFR. But it goes to show, everyone's watching, is there going to be any enforcement action? What's going to end up happening? Yes, he was too young to even have a license. How is that going to affect especially the reauthorization from last year and the change of hobbyist rules for flying. So I think a lot of people are watching this and saying, huh, I wonder what's going to happen because there are rumors going around the rumor mill that speculate that this is not the first time that he has done this. So we're really excited to see what happens. But also, if he was flying a Phantom drone, he would have had to have been flying a Phantom 2 or a Phantom 3 and never have updated his drone in order to actually fly within that red zone. So he either mm. knew how to hack his drone or he had a drone old enough where it wasn't a big deal. So either way, this 14-year-old has figured out what a lot of adults have figured out as well. They just don't willfully violate TFRs. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the fact that he's 14 years old is probably his biggest uh, savior right now. I think if he was would have been 21, 22, uh, he would have been in real trouble. Yeah, I agree as well. But it's going to be really interesting to see how that story plays out. In addition, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how this next story plays out, which it's all about drone delivery. Haya, what's going on yeah. with drone delivery? 
most of our listeners and readers will probably know that Google has been active in the drone uh, space for quite some time. They've been having tests, uh, mostly in Australia, for the last couple of years, where they were trying out this uh, fixed-wing drone that can actually land and take off vertically as well. It seems now that they may receive uh, FAA approval as early as next month to start delivering packages by drone in rural parts of America. Now, again, they've been doing this in Australia for quite some time, very successfully. I think the only real complaints that people had uh, against this drone delivery service had to do with noise levels and some concerns about privacy. But we spoke in previous episodes about this as well, that there are different rules that deal with privacy and the drones are not anything new in that regard. Google or uh, Wing Aviation, as the company is officially called, is now expanding their services in Australia. They're looking to expand it in Finland and Europe and now as well bring it to rural parts of the United States. Again, I think this is very exciting news, opening the door to other companies as well, I think, to uh, provide delivery services by drone. And yeah, we're, we can't wait to see what's going to happen next month and where actually in the US they will be launching the service. So I have some speculation about this story because I think that the FAA, if you speak FAA language, I think that they're giving us some major hints in their statements. So one of those statements, which is noted here in your article, Operations enabled by this exemption will be the first of their kind. Okay, nothing new there. A convergence of prior experience the FAA has with both small UAS operations and ding, 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 air carrier operations or part 135. That's really important because the FAA was giving out um, part 135 uh, inspections um, to Amazon previously uh, in actually the end of last year. So I know you say Project Wing is well positioned, but I would say 100% that I think what's going on here is that Amazon may be actually living up to that 2013 promise of having um, deliveries by drone. And I also think that Amazon with their, I mean, let's just say that I and my friends in tech have spent a lot less money in Amazon this last year because of third party vendors and the issues with Prime. So I think Amazon could use a little boost in PR to increase their sales. And that's just all speculation again, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Amazon steps in here and takes over Project Wing because look, there's a lot of people that are really clamoring to be the first in the United States, UPS, DHL, um, huh? you know, Project Wing, Amazon. But everyone who is smart, they went to the FAA symposium last year and they heard the FAA say, well, you know, if we're talking drone delivery, we're really talking part 135. So the FAA could have saved you hundreds of thousands of dollars in lobbying costs if you would have just had your ears open at the FAA symposium. The, the one interesting uh, bit of information, of course, is that uh, on the U.S. Uh, government website, there's only one air carrier certificate application listed right now, which is from Wing Aviation LLC. So I agree that uh, the other obvious candidate would, of course, be Amazon. Um, it would be interesting to see which one it is. I would put my money on Wing in this case. Well, let's take a nice friendly bet. I will bet you $5. It's Amazon. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, it seems like other yeah. drone pilots are betting with their futures as well. What do oh, you What do you have? <laughs> Yeah, before we go to the uh, Drones for Good articles, let's uh, have an, uh, an article that kind of goes the other way. There's this uh, video that circulated online starting off, uh, as of last week of a fixed-wing drone with a shotgun. It's a 12-gauge shotgun. It's uh, Actually, this drone was designed by a student design uh, bureau in Russia, and they've created a fixed-wing drone. It weighs 50 pounds, flies for 40 minutes, and carries a 12-gauge shotgun. And you can fly with two operators, one managing the drone, the other one taking aim at other drones or whatever other targets are available. Um, scary, I think, uh, for sure, and also quite impressive for such a heavy drone uh, to fly for 40 minutes and still be able to, to carry that shotgun, fire it, and have a decent aim, as you can see in the video in this article as well. So, um, yeah, crazy news in the drone world for sure. I watched this video, and I, I have to say, first of all, I was impressed that they, they have vertical takeoff and landing on this fixed-wing drone. They fire the shotgun multiple times without pretty much any recoil to the drone whatsoever. Yeah. They, they literally use the front of the gun as the mm -hmm. nose of the aircraft. 
So they're putting this CG just perfectly. I mean, like whoever designed and built this really put some thought into it because yeah. it flies really well. Like it's impressive how well yeah. it flies. This isn't for just like the. I was gonna say for a fifty pound drone uh, to fly that's that's well and to be able to aim and like you said having hardly any recoil, uh, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, this is this is the drone shooter right here. I mean, that guy in uh, in Kentucky had that name not for long. Look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun news, but it looks like we actually are getting to some good news. It seems like um, the West Coast is really taking off when it comes to using drones to save lives. What do you have for us this week? Yeah, there's a couple of stories uh, here. Let's start with uh, the partnership between the LA Fire Department and DJI to advance the use of drones. Uh, They've announced a partnership to basically equip the fire department in LA with the latest and greatest in terms of technology, uh, software, and also training to use drones in emergency uh, situations. I think it's a very good thing. I mean, yeah, if you look at the offering from DJI, you have some very expensive drones, uh, the M200 uh, or M210, uh, as well with the uh, Zenmuse um, X-T2. I mean, you need quite a budget to fly those kind of drones and also train your people. Uh, on the lower end of the spectrum, of course, you can use the Mavic 2 Enterprise Jewel, which is a lot less expensive. But just to promote this kind of technology with a large and well-known fire department, I think is great news, offers a lot of opportunity for, for drones being put to use as well. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I have to say that I'm pretty excited about it as well. And you know, as we talked about in pre-show, that while I am excited, the LAFD is having these nice, beautiful drones um, integrated into their program. And DJI is excited that 900 other um, organizations have implemented drones in their programs. I would say anyone who's in public safety, if you're listening to this, you do not need these super expensive drones to do some of the things that you're trying to do, like hotspot monitoring on a building that's on fire. You do not need these super expensive vehicles to do this stuff. So I just want to warn everyone out there in public safety. I would say I think that there is a lot of federal agencies that would agree with me as as well that would say it's not about what you use, but more so how you use it. If you have a very expensive drone and you do not know how to use it, I'm dealing with this almost on a weekly basis, Haya. We have a lot of enterprise trainings that have been literally back to back to back, and this problem is rampant. And oftentimes people, you know, we just had a, a student last week in Dallas that Inspire 2, Matrice 210, destroyed a $10,000 drone and realized instead of mm-hmm. fixing that drone, he could have just had a Phantom and flown the exact same mission and got even better data. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where you really have to know which drone can collect which type of data and what is most practical or efficient and portable for your group. I think that's a very good point that you bring up. I mean, in the previous articles that we posted on Drone DJ about police departments and fire departments training their people and equipping them with drones, we've seen budgets for like $60,000, $80,000 come by just to get the equipment and having one or two drones and training a handful of people. I think with drones like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Jewel and now, of course, the uh, Parrot and Navi Thermal as well, you can do the same thing for a lot less money. And um, I think you have a valid point. If, If more of those fire departments, police departments, Department, search and rescue organizations realize this, that they can actually get into this game with uh, a lot smaller budget than they, uh, they might think. I couldn't agree more. And as we move to your Drones in Good News article, the second one that we yeah. have for this week's show, it seems like that the West Metro Fire Rescue was utilizing a much smaller drone, the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise, um, for search and rescue instead of the larger M210 and XT2. Oh, yeah. So uh, how did they use those smaller drones to save lives? We have two stories there. Uh, the first one that I'd like to start with is where a 90-year-old woman who was suffering from dementia was actually found with the help of a drone. This happened in Greene County, Ohio. Uh, they used the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Jewel by the looks of it. I mean, if you look at one of the videos, you actually see this drone on display. So we're talking again about the drone that's a lot less expensive than the M210 with the Zenmuse uh, XT2. They found the woman and both the police um, department as well as the daughter of the uh, 90-year-old woman said that without the drone, they would not have been able to find her this fast. And we're talking about a situation where you're towards the end of the day going into night, uh, a 19-year-old woman uh, 
with dementia, having to spend the night outside would not have been a good uh, situation at all. So I think the drone here, uh, even though it, it, well, it helped in locating this woman, uh, played a very critical part. Then the second story we have is an injured hiker in Colorado, Denver, Colorado. This is in Clear Creek Canyon. And here's a lady who went off the beaten path and fell down a 30 feet rock face, hurt her head and basically was stranded and injured in a very inaccessible area. And in this case, they had three dozen rescue workers and it took them nearly six hours to bring this woman back to safety and transport her to the hospital. And again, they used a DJI Mavic 2 to help and locate this woman. So two great stories, uh, two examples where relatively affordable drones were used to help and find people that were uh, lost. And I think this is important because these are two real world stories, stories that actually yeah. happen. It's not just a press release about a drone manufacturer partnering up with a, a county fire department. So. Besides, I think yeah. uh, Anaheim Fire Department will be really happy and Rancho Cucamonga will be really happy because they were light years beyond uh, LAFD in adopting drones. So I think that that's good. I also think it's good to know and for people to hear these stories, these practical uses of search and rescue, utilizing much smaller drones because it's all about how they're used. And I think that'll, yeah. uh, that'll end this week's news on that bombshell. There's a lot of information also coming out, and we'll be doing another show uh, at the end of this week. Apologies for not getting uh, news to you last week. But this week, you're going to have two new shows, Haya. So we really uh, thank you for coming on the show twice this week. I know that you are traveling with the family and enjoying the sweeter things in life. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on the show. We're going to enjoy the uh, the beautiful life here in uh, southern Florida, where temperatures are a lot more agreeable than they are in New York still. So, uh, But we'll have time available later this week for the second show, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it as well, Haya. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, man. Well, that's going to do it for us today, ladies and gentlemen. If you like these new shows, don't be afraid to share them with a friend. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Overcast, wherever you download podcasts or whether it's on Spotify. Make sure you subscribe because it helps us out in helping you out. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for watching another news episode with Drone DJ and Ask Drone You. Drone You.